Hello, hello. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, Mariela, Maritza, Freddy's. Good evening, teacher. How are you today? I'm fine, and you? I'm great. I feel great, thank God. Did you enjoy the weekend? Maritza? Hey, Freddy's, nice to see you. Nice to see you too. How have you been? Very well. Hello, Mariela. You can't complain, that's good. I like that background, Mariela. It looks really relaxing, like a nice place to, to spend the weekend, right? Or yes. after work, uh huh. Yes, really for real, for silence. For silence, I think, and for taking a look through the window, right? Elizabeth, now I see Maritza on the screen. So, what do you do on your weekend, Mariela? Mm, I was a little sick, but I feel better in the Sunday. Um, just try to to start the trabajo pendiente. Pending work. Pending work. Okay. Freddy's, how about you? Excuse me. How was your weekend and what do you do? Saturday, work. Yesterday, actually went shopping, went to shop, look like food, all, all the things that we need for, for the house. Okay. Maritza, how was your weekend? Hey, Flor, welcome, Miguel, and... Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening. Jackie, welcome. Maritza, Thank sorry. You. So, uh, tell us. On Saturday, I, I work. I mm -hmm. was work um, in the morning. Um, yesterday, I I was in my house. Okay, okay, excellent. Relaxing. Relaxing, excellent. Miguel, can you hear me? Yes, teacher. Yes, okay, I now think, I, can I can see hear you. you. Very good. <laughs> yeah. So, how was your weekend? Uh, very good, teacher. Um, really good. Saturday, uh, I I was working uh, at mid time. In the afternoon, I work in my in my home, and yesterday I work in my home too. Okay. Uh, my my weekend was uh, really uh, tired, but I uh, I feel better today. Nice. Thank you for sharing. Ms. Ramirez. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Hi, good evening. What, teacher? So, the question is, how was your weekend? Ah, was good. Sorry, was because good. I, I don't have sound. But ah, was okay. Good. Yes, was very relaxing because I have two days off on Saturday wow. and Sunday. Yes. That's really good. Really nice. Yes. Thank you, teacher. Okay, good to know that. Um, Juan Jose. 
Hi, good evening. Good evening. Hi. How are you doing? How are you feeling? You look yes, you look really happy today. <laughs> this day we we start the class in the university. The Sunday and Saturday I I was working preparing class for this day. And the, okay. For the, for the next um, week or the week <laughs> the class. How many subjects do you teach? Three. Three subjects. Three subjects. Okay. Yes. Related to marketing or to business, right? No, no. no. Um, it's in relation with build, with construction, ah. electricity, um, relation with um, wall, <laughs> uh, with hydraulic, mm -hmm. uh, structural. Structures. Um, uh -huh. Yes, yeah, it's very, very um, number, many, Mark. Mark. Okay, okay. Wow, I, I have never received a subject related to those areas, but I imagine that it might be a little bit difficult to teach and to, to receive the class. I enjoy teaching. <laughs> okay, excellent. I see that uh, you too. Yeah, me too, you're right. Let's go on with Jackie. Hi, good evening, teacher. Good nice evening. to see you. <laughs> nice to see you too. Thank you. Well, about my uh, weekend, no, I stayed home. Okay. I have to, a lot of chores to do. A lot of chores, got it. And yeah, well, and uh, well, thank you also for your understanding. Uh, I think that I had told you a couple of days before um, from last week that I was having a pain, right? Like in my one of my molars, uh, toothache, I told you, I think, and then it got worse. So I had to go uh, through a little surgery uh, to, to stop the pain and to fix the problem. So I couldn't speak most of the weekend. Uh, well, mostly Saturday and yesterday I tried to speak the least that I could. So I stayed the whole day at home, just resting, trying to watch some, some things on, on, on the computer, on the cell phone. And that's it, that was it. But today I feel really, really well. Uh, sure, no problem, uh, Jennifer. Now I am going to, we're going to catch up, okay? We're going to catch up with uh, we're pending or we're missing from the last uh, class. And we're going to move on, right? Uh, to, to start the next, well, the next topics for, this is going to be basically the last uh, week. However, uh, on, we're going to finish on Monday, the next Monday. So that is going to be the last day for us, okay? It's going to be the closing and uh, the farewell, right? So uh, I think that I'm not going to have any other inconvenience. Uh, God willing, I cross my fingers. <laughs> um, and I feel, like I told you in the, in, the, in the WhatsApp group, right? I feel brand new, almost brand new. Um, so we're going to get started and I'm going to share the screen quickly as soon as I take the attendance. Okay, so I'm going to call out your names to check who's here right now. And after that, I'm going to send you to the breakout room so that you can share about, well, not everybody share about their weekend. So you will have the chance to share with your classmates plus the conversation topic for, um, for today. Okay, that is really easy, really, I think it's, it's going to be fast. So uh, nobody's going to have a lot of inconveniences with that. Uh, Beatriz is not here yet. So we'll continue with Elizabeth. 
Mariela. I'm here. Okay, uh, Brenda. It's not here, Carla. Not here yet, Diana. I'm here. Okay, Flor. I'm here. Francisco. Present. Okay, uh, Laura. Not here yet, Harbin. Present. Very good, Jennifer. I'm here, teacher. Nice, Juan Jose. I'm here. Karen. I'm here, but I'm driving. Okay, okay. Be careful. Maritza. I'm here, teacher. Uh, well, Marlene. Then we have Miguel Angel. I'm here, teacher. Rolando. I'm here, teacher. Ruth. Then we have uh, Suleyma. I'm here, teacher. Janari. Ojo, ojo, ojo. Jackie. Teacher, I'm here, Janari. Okay, I'm Janari, here. thank you. Blanca. Freddy's. I hear you. There we go. Perfect. So we're ready to go. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to share the screen right now. Okay, so welcome everybody, the people who join us at the end of the, uh, when I was taking the attendance, uh, Suleyma, Karen, uh, who else, who else? Yeah, basically it's just you, right? And Janari as well. So uh, we're going to get started. I know that some of you are working. Now I know that, that somebody's driving. So we're going to be a little bit patient, right? With, with you so that you can um, be completely present in the class. And um, as we didn't have the, the picture on Friday because of, we, we couldn't have the class, we're going to take it today, okay? I'm just telling you. So later on, uh, you can turn on your camera because I know that for some of you right now, it's not possible, but later it will, okay? Later it will be possible. So uh, let's move on. Show must go on. So we go with the class number 20. Okay, so that means that we're really moving forward. And um, wait a second, somebody's writing in the chat. Okay, got it. So today we're going to have a review and practice of the previous contents, uh, plus the extra ones that we're going to start today. And before that, okay, we're going to start with the conversation. Uh, of course, you're going to say hello. You're going to catch up, right, with your classmates. If you didn't talk about your weekend, how you're feeling, if you have any other questions, you can ask. That's okay. You're going to have five minutes, okay, to catch up and discuss the following questions. Let me share the, the link with you. Here it is. Okay, so five minutes. I am going to send you to the breakout rooms. You're going to be in, in groups of three. I think six or five would be okay. Probably five. One, two, three, four. Okay. Number three. One, two, three, four. I'm going to move you to the room number four. Okay, perfect. So we have the groups complete. I think, yeah. One, four, 
And I'm going to move here to one number five. Okay, so ready, set, and go. Full English, right? We forget about this Spanish. It was enough on the weekend. So it's time to activate our English uh, shift again. So um, here we go. Please accept the invitation. One, two, three, okay, perfect. No, 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 I feel tired. <laughs> it's, it's Monday, it's the traffic, it, and the, I, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't feel good, but it's for the, it's for the job because I feel that I have many activities and I don't know how can I do because I don't have both. And in, and yeah, um, but my job is, uh, I work for the government. Mm -hmm. So the process, you just get to. Then do you travel? How often what? Do you travel? How often I travel? Maybe if it's for work every day. <laughs> Maybe twice a year. Uh, for vacation, twice a year? Uh, yes. Maybe one time for vacation and maybe one time for for job. OK. How about you, Anna? In USA, the last, the last uh, time that I went to USA, it was two years ago. It's oh. not frequently. To travel. Okay. <laughs> like you. Okay. That's what? <laughs> I I ask him how often do you say I love you to your parents, and he ah. answered. Uh huh. He answered that every time he can, uh, he do it. He, he does, does it. it. Uh huh. Okay. And I said, uh, me too. Like he. Nice. Uh huh. <laughs> <clears throat> and now okay. it's your turn. Of the night. Okay. Um, okay. Um, Rolando, oh. you can enjoy when you can enjoy the the time that you are spending in that place. Okay. Uh, yes. yes. The puchi cabos cochinos. is is a place that is a beautiful. Uh, the Ocean Pacific is to very different uh, to the to the Atlantic. Atlantic. Yes, the Atlantic. Sorry, the Atlantic yes. is very That's, different. That than, is the principal reason why I want to travel to Roatan because everyone told me it's so different place that that we have in that country and and I want to know but like the pandemic broke my my plan. Yes, yes. It's the okay. same case for the others. Okay. For class or, or for all classmates. Yes, I think. Mm -hmm. Ah, the next question: How often do you make out in my dream tonight? Oh my God! When sorry. They what is the question? The second, how often do you wake out in middle of the night? Ah, yeah. I have to say sometimes because, <laughs> for example, I always, I don't know why I wake up at 12 in the morning, teacher. 
Moon is the moon is is full. Oh, midnight. 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 At the midnight, and sometimes I wake up at three a.m. I don't know why, but always I I I wake up at that time. It's so so weird, but I I I is sometimes that I happen to me. Okay. <laughs> a, a, a little scary. Yeah, it's a little scary. That's right. <laughs> yes, my wife told me that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What about you? Um, the true. Yeah, the when the days is a little heavy. I <laughs> I'm going to. I'm going to chop um, the food, uh -huh. vegetable, like vegetable, uh, uh, milk, milk, and some, some, some things about food. Yeah. Well, I, I go every day to the shopping mall. Oh. Yes. Yeah, really? Yes, but it's because my office is in a shopping mall. Ah, ah, that's why. Okay. Uh -huh. I think that's why. <laughs> yes, I work in, a, in galerias. Ah. Uh -huh. So every day I'm bored ah. to go to a shopping mall. <laughs> yes. Someday I'm going to visit your job. Okay, I, I take my lunch from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. If you really? are in church. I have, ah, okay. But I have my lunch uh, from 12. 12, 12, 12 20 to 1 p.m. Ah, it's for 40 it's minutes. It's a short time. Yes, yeah, it's a very short oh, time. But, if, if but you... I go out to my uh, at 4 p.m. <laughs> okay, so when, when you visit Galerias, you can come to say hi to me. Okay, okay. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> Someday, yes. Okay, okay, and what else? Uh, I don't know. What do you want? To um, know? <laughs> how often do you brush your teeth? <laughs> <laughs> I brush my teeth three years. All right, so the time is up. How often do you, right? That was a question that you were discussing with your classmates. Which question was, uh, uh, was uh, the one that you liked the most, Harbin? How often do you wake up in the middle of the night? <laughs> How often do you wake up in the middle of the night? That's right, I heard that. I I have me around sometimes I, I say because during the week I 50 50 always wake up in the in the midnight. I don't know why. But yeah. I have hard, but when I have a hard day, I sleep like a baby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think it happens to the majority of us. I don't okay. know why people say like a baby, but because babies always like crying and just sleeping for two hours and then crying and like that. <laughs> I think it depends on the baby. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe, yeah. Yeah, there are some babies uh, that fall asleep and <laughs> they don't wake up until they're hungry. Yeah. Uh huh. Hopefully that will be the kind of baby you will have. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> okay, so uh, welcome back everybody. The questions were interesting. I, I heard that the majority of you were talking about traveling and um, how often you do it, right? So, and it's something very common, right? We're going to move on. And the next one that I'm going to show you is this one right here. Okay, so how often do you, right? That was a question. Um, before I explain you this, or we before we discuss this, 
Uh, what do you remember from the last classes? In general, what do you remember? What, what did we do? Uh, what did we practice? What did we study? Because it was a long weekend, right? It was a long weekend. So I know that you could have forgotten some things, but I want to know what you remember. About vocabulary, about grammar. Teacher, I remember that the last week uh, we talking about the, um, for example, my our schedules in the in, in my jobs, in jobs uh, my call a classmate, for example. Okay. Yes, of course. We talk about schedules. Uh, we talked about the strategies, right, that people can use for overstaffing or understaffing. And we also practice with the superlative forms of the adjectives. Okay, so uh, basically that was it, right? That was it. And um, did you watch the match, the soccer match yesterday? Yes, 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 I did. Yes. <laughs> yes. It yes. was amazing. It was really interesting, entertainment. It was very entertaining. That's right. Especially the second, the second half, yes. right? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. I <understand> a lot. <laughs> nice. So uh, in your opinion, in your opinion, uh, which team was the best one in the second half? El Salvador. El Salvador. Okay, good. Uh, in the first. And one? also, I heard another comments of Mexicans, and mm -hmm. they said El Salvador was better. They were surprised. They were surprised in a positive way, right? Uh, for the way that the team played. Okay, so uh, let's talk about uh, about the superlatives, right? S speaking about the game. Uh, so in your opinion, who was the most important player for El Salvador? The goalkeeper. The goalkeeper was the most important one. Why? Yeah. <laughs> because he saved about five shoot. Yeah, um, five possible goals, right? Yeah. Approximately. Yeah. yeah, so it was, he did a really good job. Uh, who do you think was the most skillful? The one that was doing more dribbles, more tricks. I think that both teams. Uh, play is good, uh -huh. but in the second half, uh, for uh, to the right side, the, the forward to the forward. right side, yeah, uh, was a was a good player in the in the second half. I I think that is the number eight. But I don't remember the name. Number but eight. Joshua. I think it's Joshua Perez. Yeah. 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 The, this no. boy. Yeah, uh, uh, the Mexican can stop it. They couldn't stop him. That's they right. Couldn't stop him. Yeah. 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 For me, it was the better in the second half. Was the best. The best in the second half. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think it was really good. It was really good. Uh, who was the closest player from El Salvador to score a goal? Who was the closest to score a goal? Larín. Larry. Yeah, Larry. <laughs> okay, yeah. so he was the closest to score, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Who is yeah. the tallest from the soccer players from El Salvador? Who is the tallest? Zabaleta. Correct. Uh, so the, the, the defender, right? So Zabaleta, <laughs> yeah, that's right. And who is the oldest? Do you know who the oldest is from the team? I think Darwin Seren. 
Okay, so Miguel knows a lot about the selector, right? <laughs> yes. Darwin Serene was I just the, watched the oldest. The, I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the names, my, the positions. Teacher, the, this, uh, this is my <laughs> sport, my favorite sport. That's why. Okay. Now, <laughs> what is your favorite or what it, what which do you think is the most attractive uh, uniform? Because they have three, the blue, the white, and the black one. For me, the black t-shirt. I, 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 I can see um, for the picture in uh, the leather is uh, gold leather. Yeah, it's gold. I, Anybody I who has a different good. opinion? No, I I, I, I think it's the same. My I opinion is the one. same, like Miguel. Mm -hmm. Okay. The white one looks cool as well. But the black one is the best. But, yeah. But the white and blue is uh, common. Yeah. Uh, the black is different color. Uh, it's different. Finally, color. we I, have. I, I, we see it. Yeah. yeah. Finally, we have, we have a nice what? shirt. A nice shirt. A nice uniform. Yeah. I think, yeah, it's one of the best ones from the, from the gold cup. And who do you think is the most difficult opponent for El Salvador right now? Who do you think is going to be the most difficult opponent? Because there are two options, uh, Qatar and uh, Honduras. Honduras. So who do you think could be more difficult for El Salvador? I think that the more difficult is Honduras. Honduras. Okay, yeah, I think that is a big possibility. However, Qatar is playing really well. You should watch the, the games. Um, so people have good opinions, good comments about Qatar right now. So we'll see what happens, right? Now, we're going to move on. Okay, so that was a question that I, the questions that I had in order to practice a little bit about the superlatives, right? Now, we're going to study this a little bit more. Last time we practiced, if you remember, we had some sentences, right, that we completed about the, um, the perfect, the perfect tense, right? So, or the perfect models. Okay, so we have the examples here and uh, we have the perfect model, we use it to, regret or to express a regret or remorse about past actions. For example, okay, for example, uh, if Larin had scored that goal, that free kick, we could have tied the game. Podríamos haber empatado. Yeah. So it's like a regret, like oh, if, if he had scored that goal, right? So there we were used, a lot of opportunities. Uh -huh. So there were good opportunities, but that one was the closest one, right? Um, so we use that to express regret or remorse. Do you have any idea about the meaning of regret and remorse? Regret and remorse. They are synonyms. Regrets like arrepentirse? No. Arrepentimiento, right? Or arrepentirse. So in this case, arrepentimiento. Um, for example, let's suppose that you wake up at 6 a.m. and you have to be at the work at 7 a.m. and there is a lot of traffic and you arrive late to your work, your workplace. So in that moment, you think, Debería haberme despertado más temprano. Do you feel familiarized with that? Maybe once in your life you had that experience or that feeling like debería haberme levantado despertado más temprano. Yeah. Yes, I think that my the uh, the majority of us can say that, right? Um, so how can you say debería haberme Despertado más temprano in English. I should have mm -hmm. a way. I should. Up. No. 
have, so we have the third form, remember, wake, we'll have... woke, and Walk. woken, okay? Walken. So we use the third form. I should have woken up. up. How do you say mas temprano? Earlier. 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 Correct. I should have woken up earlier. I should have. Remember the pronunciation, right? We're linking the sounds. Should have. Should have. Should have. I should have woken up. Woken up earlier. Woken up. Woken up. That's correct. Woken up earlier. So I should have woken up earlier. So that's a regret. Okay. That's a regret. Uh, imagine uh, that you give your mother a gift uh, and she didn't like it and she didn't like it what so i didn't imagine that you give that your mother's is your mother's birthday right or someone special right and uh you give a gift and the person doesn't like it what do you mm -hmm. think in that moment? I shouldn't have give, given her nothing. <laughs> ok, no debería haberle dado nada o debería haberle dado algo más. Ok, o debería haber preguntado <laughs> qué le gustaba. Good so, morning. Ah, oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, you can think about different options, right? Uh, so, the number one is no debería haberle dado eso, obviously. So, we make bad decisions, okay, sometimes. That's normal. Um, so, I shouldn't, negative, I shouldn't have, okay, let's conjugate the verb give. Given. Given. The past, gave. Given. And the given. past participle is given. Given. I shouldn't have given. I'm given is nothing her. or anything. Given. I shouldn't have given her or him, right? Depending on Give who the person because is. Because you say father. I said mother or anybody special, so that's okay. Uh, okay. I shouldn't have given her <laughs> that uh, gift. That. Okay. Teacher, but if I want to say nothing is nothing or anything. 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 Okay, anything. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. <laughs> so I shouldn't have given her anything. Now, um, what other situation can I tell you? What other situation? Um, let's I suppose. I shouldn't have studied more. Okay, that, that. Let's suppose that you have a test and you don't get a good score because you didn't study or you didn't study enough. You were like five minutes. Okay, I'm ready for the test. And you got a five or six, right? That was your score. So what is the first thing that comes to your mind? What is the first regret or remorse that comes to your mind? As Jennifer said, I shouldn't ha I should have studied more. Debería haber estudiado más. Okay, I should have studied more. more okay i should have studied more okay that's right so i should have studied more that is simple regret right i should have studied more now let's look at the example right in the structure how do we form how do we make the the perfect models we use should have Okay, should have plus the past participle. That is the one that I was telling you, right? The third form of the verb to talk about regrets. Examples, I'm going to ask Rolando, please read the, the two examples. I should have sent the report soon, sooner. 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 Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have asked her to carry those boxes. Okay. So 
this is the simple regret, okay? Now, it is possible, it is possible, okay, to use another form. And the other form is, we can use could or would, okay? Could and would. Have are often used with if plus the had plus past participle. This is the formula, okay? But the most important is the practice, okay? That you understand how to use it. So in this case, we read the first example. Uh, Harvin, can you please help me with an example number one? Right here. If I have, teacher. Uh -huh, if I had known. If I have known you were sick, I could have gotten a substitute. A substitute, okay, a substitute, that's correct. How do you translate that sentence? If I had known you were sick, if I had known you were sick, I could have gotten a substitute. Hubiera encontrado, uh -huh, hubiera encontrado un sustituto, hubiera conseguido un sustituto, un reemplazo. Okay, si hubiera Teacher, sabido. Uh -huh. This is the third conditional, right? Yes, this is one of the uh, most complex. We use, complex... should have a use for regrets, right? Yes, and actually we use both. The third conditional is also for regrets um, because it's something that already happened. Uh, so let's suppose the test was very difficult. So you say, si hubiera sabido que el examen estaba difícil, habría estudiado más. Lo que siempre decimos, ¿verdad? Okay. Um, so how can we say that complete sentence, that complete example? Si hubiera sabido que el examen estaba difícil, o era difícil. If, right, that is a conditional, if. Uh -huh. If I, pay attention to this, we use had plus the past participle. Had plus the past participle. If I have known. Uh -huh. Si hubiera sabido, right? So that's example. If I had known. The... If I could have known. If I if had I... known. If I the had known. Quiz. The quiz. Was. Was hard so or was difficult. Was, uh -huh, was, was hard. Comma. We use a comma in the middle. Okay. That is I... necessary. Hubiera estudiado más. I I will I could have have studied have studied more more okay so because. this is this is more complex but as everything in life it takes practice it takes practice okay it takes practice i mean uh, requiere practica right Teacher, may I ask you something? Sure, tell me. But yeah, we will have a, like a report about that topic, right? Or not? Like because, a report? Because I think it's difficult. It is difficult, okay? I am going to share uh, some information with you through the WhatsApp group, right? So you can practice more and you can study more. You can watch a couple of videos because as I was telling you, right? It is difficult, not because we don't use it. I mean, in Spanish, we use this very often, right? Si me hubiera dicho que el reporte le urgía, yo se lo hubiera mandado ayer, right? Uh, se me hubiera avisado con tiempo, yo habría pedido permiso. So we use that frequently at work, right? Eh, si me hubiera enviado un correo, yo me habría dado cuenta a tiempo. So we use that, those expressions in Spanish. 
So we just need to learn how to express those ideas in English, okay? And something that is really, really important here is that you know how to conjugate the verbs, right? Especially in the third form, that is the past participle. So for that reason, I share with you one link, right? That is for practicing the verbs, the conjugation of the irregular verbs in the three forms. So for example, uh, Harbin was talking in the, in the breakout room, right? Uh, that he was planning a trip, but because of the virus, because of the COVID-19, he couldn't go. So his vacation plan changed. It happened to a lot of people, right? I had plans too. Um, so how can you say, uh, how can you say, uh, me hubiera ido, hubiera ido a, a la playa, o hubiera ido a mi vacación, si uh, no hubiesen establecido restricciones para viajar, for example. That is, sounds a little bit more complex. So let's use the chat, okay, for this. Hubiera ido de vacas, a mis vacaciones, eh, o hubiera ido de vacaciones, si no hubiesen establecido o puesto eh, restricciones de viaje. So how can you say that? In the chat. I... In the chat, yeah, or you can use the microphone. Uh -huh. uh, I had gone. So you have two options, right? You can use would or you can use could, okay? Yo habría, I would have, or yo podría haber, I could have. So you can use could or would, okay? Okay, uh, Diana, raise your hand. Uh, I would have gone to the beach if the president had not said the restrictions. Okay, I could have gone. There are, I mean, you can give me any answer, any idea, that's okay. You can change the, the sentence. The, the most important is that you, that you pay attention how we can structure, right, this. So I could have gone to the beach. That's what uh, Diana said right now. I could have gone to the beach, no comma, because we are using the connector if, right, in the middle. If the president if. Mm -hmm. hadn't, the negative, right, hadn't, set or hadn't established mm -hmm. the restrictions travel traveling restrictions okay so that's one example so you can see in the chat right that's the example that uh, diana was given uh, good how can you say, how can you say, uh, habría visitado a mi familia si mi carro no se hubiera arruinado? How can you say that in English? I say, um, I would have visited my family if my car didn't broken, it wasn't broken. I, I, okay, one by one. Okay, part by part. I would have visited, visited my family. My family. If, if my car, my car wasn't broken. No, we, we use no se hubiera arruinado. No se hubiera arruinado. My car had not broken down. Down. Okay, look at the example in the chat, right? I would have visited my family if my car hadn't broken down or hadn't got broken down, right? So uh, that, would, that would sound better. Okay, so uh, those are just examples, right? Uh, now, it is necessary, okay, to practice more, to read more, to watch more things about the topic. 
yes, for sure. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's take a look at the examples number two and number three. Example number two, uh, I'm going to ask Floor to read it, please. The manager. Is Floor there? No, Juan Jose. Okay, the manager could have fixed your schedule if you had mentioned it to him. Very good. The manager could have fixed your schedule if you had mentioned it to him. Uh, how do you translate that sentence into Spanish? Um, let's see. El Jennifer. Gerente, el gerente habría arreglado tu horario si se lo hubieras mencionado. Si se lo hubieras like, mencionado. In Salvadorian way. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's correct. And the last example, the last example, uh, Francisco, can you please read example number three? Okay, teacher. I would have come to work if I had received. Received? The, received the schedule on time. The schedule on time, okay. What is the translation for that sentence, uh, Miguel? I would have come to work if I had received the schedule on time. Um, I think that is would would have would have would that have. that's uh, habría yo habría okay. habría venido habría uh -huh. venido a trabajar uh -huh. si Hubiera. Si hubiera recibido el horario a tiempo. Correct. Excellent. So, if you see, that is the structure, right? We have two sentences. One is the condition, if, if is the condition, and the other one is the result. If the other one is the result. So, for example, um, if I, if I had given you the class on Friday, if I had given you the class on Friday, we would have finished the course this coming Friday. If I had given you the, if I had given you the class on Friday, we could have finished the course on Friday, this coming Friday, okay? But I couldn't, I, it was not possible for me to give you the class on Friday. So for that reason, we are going to finish the course on Monday, okay? So that is that is how we use this, okay? We, we use this expression or this structure to express uh, regrets, okay? Para arrepentimientos o cosas que ya sucedieron y uh, pensamos que podrían o no podrían haber sido de X manera Si hubiera pasado X o Y cosa, ¿ok? El Salvador hubiera ganado si Larín, metía, si, si, si Larín y el otro delantero hubieran metido los goles. Eh, algo que no pasó, ¿ok? México no habría ganado si uh, el, el Fensa no hubiera desviado la pelota. Y así podemos hablar de un montón de ejemplos, ¿ok? Uh, in everyday, in everyday life, ¿ok? In everyday life, for example, when you eat something, let's suppose that you go on the street and you buy a hot dog, and then the next day or 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 at night you have a stomach ache. That happens, that can happen, right? When you eat something on the street, it's a possibility. So what do you say in that moment? Si no me hubiera comido aquel pan, no me habría enfermado, right? It's a normal situation, right? Uh, I don't know, when you forget to do something in the shopping list, right? You don't make a shopping list and you go to the supermarket. Oh, I forgot to buy the milk. Si hubiera notado lo, las cosas que iba a comprar, no se me hubiera olvidado. So we, we use that every day, right? Um, I don't know, there are many, many situations, right? So 
I need you to think about that, right? Think about that. Now that you know the structure and the idea how we use it in Spanish, now you know how to use it in English. I need you to think about uh, real examples, real examples that you can say uh, in Spanish for, uh, and then try to convert them into English. So who can give us an example in Spanish, please? And we're going to try to translate it. Something typical that can happen to you or that already happened to you today or last week or on the weekend. Me hubiera levantado más temprano si hubiera sabido que el tráfico estaba pesado. Ok, me hubiera levantado más temprano si hubiese sabido que el tráfico estaba pesado. Ok, that's a complete sentence. Ok, so how can you say that? We already have the uh, woken up earlier, right? So it's, we just need to write down the compliment. I'm sorry for the noise that my neighbors make, but it's only a Mondays. So <laughs> I would have woken up earlier. Uh huh. Si hubiera sabido. If I have no. If I have no. I would have woken up earlier. Uh huh. Very good. So no comma. Why no comma, teacher? Because we have the connector. If in the middle, right? If I, I had known, known el traffic that the pesado. traffic was uh -huh, that the traffic was was heavy. The traffic was heavy. Okay, good. So um, I would have woken up earlier if I had known the traffic was earlier. What was heavy? Sorry. Uh, so that's an example. Very good. A, another one that you want to share? Just probably one more example because later we have the exercise number six. Okay, that will help Richard, you to practice. Um, I'm sorry, just to uh -huh. be clear mm -hmm. and to understand better. Mm -hmm. uh, the verb that is with the model verb is in base form. The third verb is in, in past participle. And in the conditional, the verb should be in past and the second verb in past participle. Okay, so if you want to have a clear picture, a clear picture in the in the condition class, okay, I'm going to probably um, create a new slide, okay, to do my my art attack part. Wait a second. Okay, so I'm going to create an extra slide here. Teacher, how do you say relajo in English? Disorder. M mess. You can say disorder or you can say mess. What is the example that you want to say? That you want to use? <laughs> que relajo. O sea, pues, What a mess. <laughs> what a mess. Okay, so I'm going to give you two two things, right? So we have the condition plus or the condition sentence. And we have the result. They can change the position. That's not a problem, right? So the condition, in the condition we use if, okay? Wait, I'm going to move it to the beginning. In parentheses, we use if plus had plus. Did you make the, another slide. Wait, wait, okay. I, I, I'm going to, to, to oh, share no, with no, you. No, I can say it. Yeah. yeah, I did. I, I, I paused the, the sharing, so that's the reason why you didn't see it. 
So if I, uh, if plus had plus the past participle. Okay, this is the formula. But to be honest, I don't memorize the formula. I remember, I memorize the, the examples, the structure. So how can you see that example? Okay, let's go with the example of, of the test. If I had studied more, comma, that's example, if I had studied more, that is the condition. Si hubiera estudiado más. Ahí viene los hubiera, right? So uh, the result class. The result class is basically the have or has, depending on the subject, right? If it is he, she, it, we use has. We're missing would at the beginning. Would or could. You have the two options, would or could plus mm, I'm going to make it simple for you. Wait a second. Parentheses plus wait, plus would have and the past participle. Okay, um, so remember past participle is just the third form of the verb, okay? It's not something complicated. Go, went, gone. So gone is the third form. Give, gave, given. That is the third form, given. If you say drink, drank, but and I drunk. Just... Eat, ate, eaten. So that is the, that is basically the, the third form, right? So that is a past participle, okay? So you see the result class, we use would or could plus have plus a past participle. Uh, if I had studied more, that is a complement. I would or I could, depending on what you want to say, have got or gotten, I could have got a better score. Okay. So how do we understand this? If I had studied more, I would have got a better score. Okay, si hubiera estudiado más, habría tenido un mejor resultado de puntaje, una mejor nota, a better grade, right? So, uh, we have the condition and we have the results. So what do you need to remember? In the if class, we use had. And in the result class, we use have and also would or could. Okay, so one example that can be every day at work. Okay, every day at work. Uh, let me select the text. If I, let's say, If I had worked harder, let's suppose if I had worked harder last mm, month, comma, what is the result? Let's suppose that in your company, they have the employee of the month. Right? I would have 
would have been the employee of the month. This is just an example, right? If I had worked harder last month, I would have been the employee of the month, okay? Si hubiera trabajado más duro el mes pasado, hubiera sido el empleado del mes. So uh, that's the way that I would explain it to you, like the way that I would tell you to understand it. It's not to memorize a lot of formulas. It's just to remember that we are using the two clauses, right? The two sentences, if that is a condition, plus the result that is would or could. And we use two forms, okay, of the perfect tense. If you want to see it like that, right? In the if clause, we use the past perfect. That is this one right here. I'm going to draw, draw a little square here. This will be the past perfect and in the result, we use the person perfect, have plus the past participle. So it's just that. But of course, for, them, for, for many students, this is difficult because they don't study the verbs. So it's like, okay, I, I got the idea, but I don't remember how to say this verb in the third form. For example, how do you conjugate the verb um swim the verb swim 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 uh -huh. and the third form the past participle swim correct how do you conjugate the verb um Forget. In the, in the simple past, forgot. In the past participle? Forgotten. Forgotten. Okay, forgotten. That's correct. Now, how do you conjugate the verb do? Do, do, do. Did. And? Down. Down. Okay, correct. So, how do you conjugate the verb make? Make. Make. Made. 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 made, and, made. and made. So, in some cases, we have a classification of, of verbs, right? We have group verbs that change in the three forms. We have changed that only change in the in one form for example make made made only one made. change yes. right and we have verbs that don't change for example set 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 yeah cut cut and cut uh, hit hit and Hit, oh, not hot, hit. <laughs> okay, so um, we have the verbs that change, like like the verb make, made, made, uh, that where they change only in the past, in the past form. For example, read. This is about pronunciation, okay? This is about pronunciation, read. Red and red. The pronunciation is different. So read, red, red. Mm -hmm. Read, red, red. Okay. Another one. Buy. Bought. Bow. And bought. Bow. Yeah. No change. Uh, only in the past. And then we have verbs that have the three different forms, right? Do, did, done. Oh. Go, went, gun, right? Go, went, and gun. And I can go on, I can go on. The list of irregular verbs is long, 
right? And we have a lot of verbs that we need to learn to memorize. Mm -hmm. Teacher, is there a secret to learn the verbs? No, you have to memorize them. The only secret that I can give you is that you need to study the verbs in groups, okay? Study the verbs in groups. The verbs that don't change, the verbs that change only in the past, the verbs that change in the three forms, okay? Uh, and also you can classify them uh, because based on the, how can I tell you? On the ending, right? In la terminación, for example, uh, done, gun, right? That's a similar uh, ending sound. And uh, what else? Basically just that. Now, let's go on. Let's go on with more practice. Uh, do you have questions about this? In this moment? In this moment, no. No, okay. So obviously one thing is to understand, but to understand more, you need to practice. So practice makes perfect. Don't forget about that. Now let's go to the next, to the previous slide. I'm going to save this. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, so you can take a screenshot, please. So you keep it as a, as a little reminder. And remember that it's possible to change the position. Okay, for example, uh, you can say, I would have, being the employee of the month no no comma because we we use the if in the middle the if it's a connector right if i had worked harder last month so it is possible to change the position change the order of the sentences the difference is that we don't use comma when the if clause is at the end because the if is connecting the two sentences. Okay, so you can use the two options. Okay, um, so you have the screenshot. I'm going to take a screenshot too. Okay, I will stick it over here. Here are my drawings. Okay, perfect, let's go on. So we are going to complete the exercise really quickly. Uh, wait a second. Salud. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Um, exercise number six, right? Complete the sentences with should, could, or would have plus the past participle. So number one, I'm going to ask Yanari to help us out, please. Number one. Okay, number one. Yeah. If the server has received received. received. Uh -huh. Proper training. They could, they couldn't answer the customer question. They could have answered the customer's question. That's correct. Number two. Uh, one volunteer. Raise your hand, please. Francisco. I tried. Sure. Yeah, we're trying. Remember, this is the practice. Okay. When you go to the platform and you take the quizzes, you complete the exercises, that is the, 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 the real, okay, okay, the real time, yeah. Okay. Uh, the bartender should not take, take her uh, that bottle of wine without permission. So the bartender shouldn't have, don't forget we need to use the auxiliary, have, shouldn't have, taken, take, took, taken, 
Okay, wait a second. My connection is unstable. So I'm going to turn off the camera for a moment. Okay. Uh, so the bartender shouldn't have taken that bottle of wine without permission. Okay, can you please write down the answer? Only the answer in the chat. Shouldn't have taken. Okay, write it down in the chat. Shouldn't have taken. Now I'm going to take the attendance. I didn't see that it was 9.14 already. So uh, it's time to speed up. Okay, like fast and furious. Okay, give me just a second. Here it is. Okay, Beatriz says that she cannot be in class because her daughter is sick. That's too bad. Uh, let's go with Ma Elizabeth. Mariela. I'm here. Good, Brenda. Then we have a uh, check. Carla, Diana. Present. Okay, I'm just going to clarify. Shouldn't have taken. That, that would be the answer. Shouldn't have taken. So, uh, Floor? I'm here, teacher. I'm okay. listening, but I'm driving. Oh, okay, okay. Be careful, please. Uh, Francisco? Thanks. Present, teacher. Laura? Present, teacher. Nice. Harvin? Thank Present, you. teacher. Jennifer? I'm here, teacher. Juan Jose? I'm here. Karen? Maritza? I'm here, teacher. Okay, very good. Miguel? Rolando? I'm here, teacher. Excuse me. Okay, okay. No problem, man. Ruth? Mondays are chaotic. Okay, I know that Mondays are, are a little bit difficult, especially in San Salvador, so I understand. Okay, uh, Suleyma? I'm here, and teacher. Okay, are you sick, Salima, or it's the microphone, the connection? No, I'm sick. <laughs> oh my I, God. I might be like I'm in right now. <laughs> I'm oh, so yeah. sorry. Yeah, teacher. Maybe tomorrow I'm going to feel better because I was, I have been drinking some lemon juice. <laughs> lemon juice, okay. Ginger, ginger can help you too. Uh, hot hot drinks yeah uh, Janari. i'm here teacher jackie i'm here okay blanca is not here for some reason uh and freddy's i hear okay there is elizabeth too okay perfect thank you so much so let's go on with the volunteer for the second example, please. The number three, the servers. <clears throat> the servers, parenthesis, would be in trouble if they had been late for the meeting. Uh -huh. Anybody? The servers could Harvin. be in. Okay, I'm going to give the chance to Harvin and then you confirm that, uh, Jennifer. Okay, the answer is the servers could, could have been in trouble if they had been late for the meeting. So, can you please write down the answer through the chat? What is missing in the space? Okay, uh, Jennifer and Juan Jose, do you have the same answer as Harbin? Would have been? 
Would have been. Yeah. Would have been. Okay, so you have the same answer. Would have been. Very good. Thank you, Harbin, Juan Jose, and Jennifer. That's correct. Okay, don't forget about the reactions. Okay, this is difficult. This is difficult. So if you're trying, that's excellent for me. Okay, so would have been. That's the correct answer. Number four, one volunteer for number four. Please raise your hands. Don't fight one person at a time. <laughs> you should you should have asked the manager for a day off. You should have asked the manager for a day off. Okay, did you write it on the chat? Oh, Miguel sent me uh, the answer, should have asked. Okay, yes, that's correct. Share the answer in the, in the through the chat so that everybody can compare, right? If they have a, the same answer or not. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Diana. We continue with the number five, the cashier. Who wants to try that one? The cashier, parenthesis, should not take that money from the register. Okay, Jennifer, can you say the can you say the sentence, please? Okay. The cashier shouldn't have taken that money from the register. Shouldn't have taken, shouldn't have taken. That's correct, shouldn't have taken. So I'm going to share the answer with everybody. Okay, the cashier shouldn't have taken that money from the register. And then we have the last one, number six. I should call to let the manager I was sick. Anybody who wants to try? Jackie, Mariela, Fredis, Maritza, uh, Laura, Ruth, Suleyma. Janari. Just follow it. This is like when you're playing a uh, Lego, right? The, the Los Legos. So you're just putting the pieces together, right? Following the same patterns. Mariela, go ahead, please. Uh, I should call. No, I you say, should have. Should have. Uh huh. Should have. I should have called to let manager. I was. Okay. Correct. I should have called to let the manager. I will say, let the manager. No, I think it's missing one word there. Let the manager know I was sick. Excellent. Should have called. So those are the answers, guys. Those are the answers for this exercise. Congratulations and thank you for participating. Uh, as I told you, right, this is a kind of topic that requires a lot of practice from you. Now, let's move on to the next one. Um, well, that was the explanation that I was giving you. And now we have this exercise uh, number seven. So you're going to read the following situations, right? And discuss with a partner about the actions. Pay attention here. You're going to think about, think in the position of a, of a manager, right? What the, the actions the manager could have done to improve or to solve them, okay? For example, let's do number one together. Uh, Money has disappeared from the register machine, but I can't tell who is taking it. Okay. When it says, I can't tell, no es, no puedo decirles quién lo está, quién está tomando el dinero. No. Eh, no lo puede notar. No puedo notarlo. Okay. No puedo identificar. No puedo ver quién lo está robando. Okay, so I can't tell. 
So if I if somebody tell you tells you right or ask you, hey, can you tell the difference between my previous look and my new look? Can you tell the difference? Puedes notar la diferencia? Can you tell the difference? Um, so that's that's the example, right? Money has disappeared from the register machine, but I can't tell who's taking it. What do you think the manager should have done or could have done or would have done in that situation? Any ideas? Somebody's maybe, taking money. Uh -huh. Maybe he couldn't have checked the camera or the video camera. He should have checked the camera. Debería haber revisado la cámara. He should have checked the camera. Okay, that's a good idea. But what happens if they don't have a camera, a surveillance camera? He should have to buy one. <laughs> he should have bought one, right? He should have bought one. Debería haber comprado una o instalado una. Okay, so that's one option. Another option? ¿Qué más pudo haber hecho el, 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 el gerente para resolver este problema? He should have, he should have organized a meeting. He should have organized a meeting. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. Uh, Francisco? I should have uh, saved with K. I should have saved the money, the money uh, yes. in, a, in, a, in a box, in a safe yes, box. Yeah, okay. Safe box. Okay, got it. That's another possibility. Very good. So that's what you're going to do right now. You're going to discuss about what actions the manager could have done or could have taken to improve or to solve the problem, okay? You will discuss number two, three, four, and five. Uh, giving examples using the perfect forms, the perfect models, okay? You have three options, right? You can use should have, this and the other, could have, this and the other, would have, this and the other. So you have the three options, okay, to express your idea. For example, in the number one, I could, I could say, ah, he should have uh, installed security cameras or surveillance cameras uh, around the, the store, or he should have called the police. He should have called the police. That's a very drastic decision, but it's money, it's my money, right? So, um, debería haber llamado a la policía. Uh, or he could have, right? He could have, uh, I don't know, like Jennifer said, right? He could have scheduled a meeting to talk about the problem and find a solution with the team, with the staff. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to discuss uh, possible things that the manager could have done in the situation number two, three, four, and five. So I'm going to send you to the breakout rooms. You are going to be in, in groups of three or four. So you have more ideas to express your opinions, to discuss. And uh, here we go. Ready, set, and go. So the invitation to join the breakout rooms. Hey, Jackie. Yeah. So we're just missing group and then it's all right. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, and three.
someone brought three bottles of the best wine in the restaurant, but none uh, of the um, servants has reported the issue. What? That's a problem. What? Someone broke three bottles of the best wine. Ah, did you? <laughs> <laughs> you scared me. I thought it was another thing. No, I'm okay. just kidding. <laughs> okay. Um, the server has reported the issue. Uh, you should have, no, the manager, the manager, uh -huh. the manager should have, could, could, no, should, or could have, uh -huh, could have, could have, uh, could have, uh, talked. Uh, I have, I'm going to share with you. Wait, okay. Um, okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, can you please zoom yes. in? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's better. It's better. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's start. Well, we're going to. Mad about it, so they will, they will try to find who is the teeth. Yes, and the second, the second one. Yes. So, uh, so one broke three bottles of the, of the best wine in the restaurant, but no one is no one of the server has reported the issue. Hmm. What, what, what else? I... The question is a mess. And it's, it is very difficult to stop to understand. Um, maybe. Who I'm not pretty sure. The responsible. The responsible. And um, what about you, Juan Jose? What do you think? What option? What another option we can add? Um, I think that the manager mm -hmm. um, would be to um, review. But we have we have to use could have, should have, or will have. Maybe we'll have. Mm -hmm. The manager will it's have. An, it's an option. You have to um, confront the employees. Could and have them. confronted. Could have confronted. Okay, I'm because confronted. these are these are things that are already finished, right? Things are already happened. Uh, so, ¿qué habría hecho? ¿Qué debería haber hecho? Okay, podría haber hecho. So he, he could have had, he could have, you said he could have confronted. Podría haber confrontado. Okay, algo que podría haber hecho. Uh -huh. Porque son cosas que ya sucedieron. Entonces ya no es como que las pueda cambiar en el presente. So for the reason you said he could have confronted the servers. Very good. Let's move to the second one. <laughs> Do you want guys? Someone broke three bottles of the best wine in the restaurant, but none of the servers has reported the issue. Oh my God. Well, it's um, a common situation in some restaurants or any, um, well, restaurants or stores. Stop. Mm. The kitchen manager has been taking stuff from the storage room. For example, mm. I, I think the, the man the, the bodega. Stop. Storage. Storage mm -hmm. room. Uh -huh. Storage mm -hmm. room. 
uh, for example, uh, the manager should 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 have um, installed the security cameras in the storage rooms. Maybe. Mm -hmm. That's a possibility. It's a possibility. Okay. Another one, I, I think the the manager should have sure sure inventory. Okay. Inventory has sure sure took should have um, taken 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 should have taken okay should, should have taken uh, the inventory. inventory the inventory. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Well, that would be my answer. Yeah. You should fire the kitchen manager. <laughs> For being a thief. <laughs> he should have fired the kitchen manager, in your opinion. Yeah. He should have fired. Okay. Yes. If the delivery is, is a, how a long time to, to order. The number four, the kitchen manager has been taking stuff. What is stuff, teacher? What's that? Things. Stuff. Uh -huh. Cosas. Stuff. Cosas. Sí. Mm -hmm. Cosas. Oh. Ah, okay. Stuff from the project room. The manager could have yeah. could have fire. The or this gun. Uh yes. I I think that in this case the kitchen manager would have uh have this been one. paid in the same place of the store room storage room mm -hmm. All right. So I know that you had you had a lot of things to say about the examples or about those situations, right? And what the manager could have done. Uh, however, there is not that much time, okay, to just focus on that. Uh, I'm going to ask for one opinion or one uh, possible solution for the problem. So for number two. Someone broke three bottles of the best wine in the restaurant, but none of the server has reported the issue. What should the manager uh, have done or what could have, could have he done or what would have he done in your opinion? No one is reporting um, the issue. Mm -hmm. My, sorry. Go ahead, Francisco. Okay, thank you. My opinion in this case is that the, the, the manager is 
uh, curaf a uh, amirin curaf um, curaf had curaf had curaf have amirin curaf have amirin uh -huh. um um know the all employees okay a meeting with all the staff staff yes Teacher, okay i have a question i'm so sorry to ask you so much in this oh, case, okay. if if, I, if we talk about third person, we don't have to use has. Uh, no, because we have the model verb should. So when we use model verbs, we don't modify the auxiliary verbs. Okay, okay, thank you. It's so for much. example, when you say uh, will, when you use, uh, let's say must. Okay can uh -huh, so we don't change the, the 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 verb okay she can go it's not she can goes uh-huh so when the model verbs we don't we don't change the verb so should have he should have i should have everybody sh <laughs> should have uh-huh so uh thank you so much teacher Anna, i'm have... sorry no don't be sorry uh to be honest as a student, I love to ask questions. So <laughs> uh, I am I know what it is to have a lot of doubts. So uh, if you ask a question, what about have had? Be sure why to have? Well, have is the auxiliary, and had is the principal verb in the sentence. Okay, should have had. Debería haber. Tenido, should have had. So should have had a meeting with all the staff. Okay, one is auxiliary, have, and had is the main verb or the principal verb of the sentence. So this is the action, right? Okay, that's what we make the modification and not have because have is the auxiliary. So let's continue, number three. My customers complain that my servers take too long to deliver the food. Okay, what should the manager have done, uh, Diana? The manager should have hired more employees to deliver the food faster to all the customers. Okay, maybe the problem was that there were not enough, so he should have hired or contracted more servers. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. And number four, the kitchen manager has been taking stuff from the storage room. Uh -huh. Jennifer? I think that the manager should have fired the... the kitchen manager. The kitchen manager, yes. Okay. Debería haberlo despedido. The manager should have fired the kitchen manager. Should have fired him. Okay. So he should have fired him. Okay. No hacerlo fuego, despedirlo. <laughs> okay. So that's correct. Fire him. So number five, the schedule is a mess and it is very difficult to, for staff to understand it. What should the manager have done in this case? What could have he done or what would have he done in this case? Mm -hmm. Any the idea? manager should have explained the schedule to the employees. Okay, he should have explained the, the schedule or he could have explained the schedule to all the, the, the staff. Okay, good. So uh, maybe he could have um, created the, the schedule with, with them, right, in a meeting. So there are many options, many options. 
So uh, we're going to move on to the next one. I'm going to clear all the drawings. So I move on to the slide where you're go we're going to discuss, okay? Uh, the advantages of employee surveillance programs in restaurants. Uh, surveillance, it's when you have these security cameras, okay? That, that's surveillance. Uh, how would you define an inadequate crisis manage management plan? Okay, uh, in, imagine that it's a restaurant, right? There is a uh, a crisis. Flight. Ah, what? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> there is a big problem because of hygiene, hygiene. Okay, hygiene. So the manager receives a lot of a lot of uh, demands from customers because the food was dirty, was contaminated, was uh, I don't know. And how, how, how would be an inadequate crisis plan for the management, managing this problem? Mm. How would you define it? Well, como sería un, un uh, plan de manejo inadecuado de una crisis in a restaurant? Have you ever worked in a restaurant industry? No. No, anybody? No? no. I have never no, worked. No. no experience? Okay. So Maybe imagine that. As uh -huh. you say, teacher, the hygienic that happens to biggest, and that's why the no new cycle. <laughs> Okay, so that happened to some restaurants in El Salvador. Okay, uh, anonymous. <laughs> uh, so, the, an inadequate uh, crisis management plan, it's a long name, I know, uh, would be uh, basically when there is no plan or when the plan exists, but probably the employees don't know it, right? So uh, they don't know what to do in a crisis situation. Now, let's go with the second one, okay? Could a lack of communication cause a crisis management plan to fail in mitigating financial loss? What do you think? This is just to express an idea, okay? Of course, we are not experts, but we can give an opinion, okay? Could a lack of communication, okay, falta de comunicación, uh, provoke or create or cause a crisis management management plan to fail in mitigating financial loss? Can communication affect the financial aspect of the company? Yes or no? Lack of communication affects yes. financial aspects of the company. Who said yes? Francisco? Uh, or Miguel? Yes, affect. Okay. Yes, affect because if you don't know how a uh, good communication with other departments, for example, uh -huh. uh, we have a uh, uh, some issues. However, if you communication with other, uh, whatever would uh, you start with the person to to do the the limpieza, the cleaning. What? The cleaning, cleaning. The cleaning, or the 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 grand boss. Well, mm -hmm. the big boss, okay. If the big boss, yes. If, if, if the communication is fluency um, according with the reality. 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 Okay. 
Jennifer, you raise your hand. Uh, sorry? Sorry, sorry. Can, no, can no. we, what? Francisco? Uh, can we, um, uh, 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 this company uh, maybe have a, a good progression, progresso? Yeah, progression is okay. For the crisis. Or progress, uh -huh, or the crisis. Mm -hmm. in, 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 a progress in, in and the crisis. Okay, excellent. Uh, Jennifer, I don't know if you want to say something else. Thank you so much, Francisco. Really good participation. Not really, teacher. I, okay. I was agree with the statement that you say because a lack of communication can affect a lot of uh, uh, to the company. Yeah, that's for sure. Okay, so now we're going to the final part of today's class, okay? Because of time, we're going to stop in this final activity. Uh, don't forget, uh, don't think that I don't remember the trivia. I have the trivia ready for you. So we're going to do it tomorrow uh, that we have more time, okay? Mondays are difficult, so I know. Uh, for some people, it was difficult to get home. For some people, it's, I mean, they're still driving right now. They are not home, they are working, so. It was it was a little bit complicated. Francisco is already uh, on the sky, right? And with the moon and the clouds, he's ready to go to it's sleep. A little moon. Okay, so we're going to share. I'm going to read for you right now, just for pronunciation. This is something that we're going to do tomorrow. Okay, so today you are going to practice, or tomorrow you're going to practice during the day because tomorrow in the breakout rooms, you are going to read this text, this reading individually, individually. So you need to know how to pronounce the vocabulary, the numbers, everything. I am going to give you the example, but you are going to practice by yourself. Okay, so everybody's going to read this aloud. Okay, you're going to read it out loud. Most of the public discussion of the of surveillance technology and its use revolves around the question, is it spooky or reassuring? But a different issue is the effect of surveillance on behavior. And a new research uh, paper shows in detail how significant the surveillance effect can be. The researchers measure the impact of software that monitors employee level theft and sales transactions before and after the technology was installed at 392 restaurants in, in 39 states. Employee theft and fraud is a big problem, estimated at up to 200 billion dollars a year across the economy. Most of the restaurant industry pay its, pays its servers low wages and they depend on tips. Employee replacement is high. In that environment, a certain amount of theft has long been regarded as a normal part of the business. A simple example is a bartender not charging for a round of drinks and urging the customers to take care of me with a large tip. Other tactics are more elaborate. But monitoring software is now available to track all transactions and detect suspicious patterns. After the installation of the monitoring software, Income per restaurant increased by an average of $2,982 a week. Knowing they were being monitored, the servers not only pulled back on any unethical practices, but also channeled their efforts into, say, prompting customers to have that dessert or a second beer. So this is something adapted from an article, right? In the New York Times. And um, there are some questions that we're going to try to understand or to answer. Why do people think surveillance is considered spooky? Spooky. 
Spooky, yes. Spooky. Why do people think that surveillance is considered spooky? Right. Uh, maybe because the cameras are located in private zones. In private zones or areas, yes. Uh, obviously, people feel a little bit afraid or intimidated when they are being recorded by a camera or by cameras, different cameras. So that's the reason why people consider that surveillance or vigilancia, that surveillance is spooky. How many restaurants were part of the research? 392. 392, okay, good. So you have to pay attention, right, to the text. I'm asking you the questions, you look for the answers. Remember, it's skimming and scanning, so you need to scan it, right, quickly. What is estimated uh, cost of the employee theft and fraud? 200 billion. 200 billion. 200 billion, 200 billion. dollars. Okay, it's not colonies, right? It's 200 billion dollars. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> What is, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. what is a fraud tactic used by, by, by bartenders? What is a tactic they are using? According to the text. Not charging uh, for a round of drinks. Not charging, right? Okay, give me six beers. Okay, here you go. Give me the uh -huh. money, right? Uh -huh. Give me the money. That's it. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Good. Uh, or asking the customers to consider, right, to help them with the with the tips. Next one. Uh, question number five. What was the increase of the income after the installation of monitoring software? It's not available to try. That is right. Buttons. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. What is the right pronunciation? Pattern. Patterns. Patterns. You can say patterns, patterns. or you can say patterns. Yeah, patterns. Okay. Patrones. Okay. Patrones. Yeah. Patterns. Correct. Patterns. And the last one what was the change in behavior in the staff after the monitoring software was installed? The servers not only pulled back on any uh, un, unethical uh, un practice, but also channel their efforts into, say, prompting customers to have the dessert or a second beer. Mm -hmm. Correct. So now <laughs> they are not taking the, the, <laughs> the unethical practices, but now they are like, would you like to eat a cheesecake? Would you like a second beer? Because they know, right, that they are going to get extra yeah. money from that. So, yes. That is that happens in the restaurant industry. Now let's go on. I'm just going to check that everybody's here. Uh, you say present if you are here. If you're not, there will be silence. Okay. So uh, Elizabeth, Mariela, excellent. Thank you. Uh, Brenda couldn't make it, unfortunately. Uh, Carla is not here. Diana, present. Floor. Francisco, Flor was driving, right? Francisco? Present teacher. Uh, Laura? Present teacher. Harvin? Present teacher. Uh, Jennifer? Present. Juan Jose? Present. Karen? Karen is not here, so we continue with Maritza. Present teacher. Miguel? Christian. Rolando. Ruth. Suleima. Yanari. Yes. You're I'm next. Here. Okay. Jackie. I'm here. And Fritz. I'm here, teacher. 
Okay, perfect, guys. Thank you. Uh, so we're going to pause the presentation here uh, because of time. So what I was telling you, right? You need to study, you need to practice reading this text, investigate the pronunciation, right? If necessary, record yourself because tomorrow in the breakout rooms, you are going to read one by one. You are going to read all this text. So it is necessary for you to practice. And uh, also tomorrow we're going to do the vocabulary about surveillance, reassure, behavior, theft, wage, tip, or spooky. If you want to do it before at home, that's your decision, right? So uh, that's all for today. Uh, do you have any questions or comments? No, fine. No Thanks. questions? <laughs> okay, so Diana, I uh, want to ask you if it's possible for you to say for the last, uh, let me see, around eight minutes or 10 minutes? Me? Yes. Me, Diana, Yesenia Reyes Alas. Yes, you are <laughs> okay. the only Diana in this group. <laughs> okay, yeah. Let me check, yeah, you are the only Diana here. <laughs> so, yes. uh, well, if you agree, we're gonna, I'm going to take a, a quick picture and tomorrow we're going to take another one because many people have problems to connect today. So it's better when we have a picture with the mayor, with, everybody right so uh, i'm going to take one right now for the for the record right that was the week number four that we finished excellent let me check three two one cameras on say hi say cheese hi. Hi. and here we go excellent one two three don't move don't move There you go. Excellent. I don't. I need. I need to think about another pose. I need. I mean, I don't have many. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So, guys, thank you so much. Have a good night and an excellent week. It was a pleasure to see you and to hear you one more time. Ready with a lot of energy. To, to, it's a new week, a new opportunity, and we have to be thankful, right, for being alive and optimistic for every new learning, every new knowledge, right, that we, that we have, and for having the chance to, to interact, right, with so many wonderful people. So take care of yourself. I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Uh, see you tomorrow. Bye. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everyone. 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 Good night, Bye, 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 bye. You're, not, you're bye, in a hurry, Diana. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't know that it's my turn to stay yeah. 10 more minutes. Okay, Um, on Thursday, I couldn't be on class. Uh, I don't know if you discussed the same token as today. No. No, uh, I didn't review. <laughs> yeah, you need to the, see the, the class. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if I have, let me see any doubts about that. Uh, today, the topic was new. It wasn't the, the, the same as. It was Thursday, right? basically new. Uh, we saw the, how can I tell you? We saw the conversation with the topic but we didn't study the topic. Ah, so okay. that was the difference. Uh, I'm going to show you. Oh, <laughs> look at you. <laughs> that was a crazy picture. Okay. So, uh, no, nah, that was fun. So basically okay. this is- ah, uh, I saw a list that you, you sent through the WhatsApp chat mm -hmm. uh, with uh irregular verbs exactly so that, that is for is you to for study the, today's topic right yeah you need you you need to learn the the, the majority of them right 
So this is what we did. We had the exercise to practice. We had the conversation. Uh, tips to monitor personnel and improve workplace operation, right? Uh, talking, we talk about that, what documentation they use to evaluate you or to check that you're doing your job. Uh, we were discussing about which are the most effective strategies to avoid uh, understaffing or overstaffing. So that was- Understaffing. Really, yeah. Understaffing is the opposite of overstaffing. And what it's overstaffing means. Okay, what the meaning of overstaffing is when you have more personnel than you need. Ah, okay. So there are some companies that have shifts, for example. So they have people who work in the morning and they finish in the afternoon, then mm -hmm. a new group enters in the afternoon and they finish at night. So that is a, let's say a distribution, right? That the companies the make. Strategy. The strategy. But what happens if they make a mistake in the schedule and everybody goes in the same shift. That's oh overstaffing. Okay. And understaffing is the opposite. You don't have uh -huh. enough personnel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I did the homework 3.5 mm -hmm. and uh, but I, I told you you told the 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 topic we saw today so mm. that's why i made some mistakes but now i have more more and i have my ideas clear okay more clear or more or clear 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 yeah, clear it's difficult to pronounce clear <laughs> <laughs> okay um yeah, today was a really uh, a little bit difficult topic. It was, it was. Uh, that's why I took my time to explain this, right? Because I, I knew that it could be confusing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I have dots about this. Mm, let me check. Another thing. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, no, just that. But um, in the platform, we have to finish uh, homeworks in this week to 3.9. Um, let me check that. Mm. I will tell you exactly. Of course, this is the last week, so you need to be done with everything. Uh, oh, yes, you're right. We have to finish the final exam too, right? Yes. Yeah. So how, so, how we have the classes here, but if we didn't finish the, 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 the class, I'm watching a screenshot of a class video conference 19 vocabulary practice. <laughs> okay. Where are you watching that? Um, what? No, no, Where no, no, no. I didn't, I didn't realize that until this time. Ah, oh, okay, that okay. In the platform, in homewards, we have that videos. I thought it was just uh, in the YouTube channel. No, no, you have it in the platform too. Mm, okay, uh, let me check. Uh, uh, no, I think I don't have any dots. It's section about. three, right? You were asking about. Yeah, so I made three. a mistake in the number two. Because I now I I I did in the correct way, but before 
I put the servers could have been in trouble if they had been late for the meeting. But it, the correct way is the servers will have been. But uh -huh. for me, it makes sense. The servers could have been in troubles if they had been late for the meeting. If because I'm thinking in Spanish. Yeah, that's the reason. <laughs> Ajá. Estoy pensando como los camareros pudieran haber estado en problemas si ellos no hubieran estado, si ellos hubieran estado tarde para la reunión. Pero la correcta es los camareros estar, hubieran estado, hubieran estado en problemas si ellos hubieran no. estado tarde en la reunión. Ah, si hubieran estado tarde. No. Ya. When we were in classes, I I did it in the correct word, in the correct way. Uh huh. So and yeah, because, yeah, that because happens. Because I have you... fresh ideas. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, without <laughs> explanation, it's more difficult to complete the exercises. Mm -hmm. So. So that would be all right. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you for your Diane. time, teacher. No, thank you for staying and for joining the class again. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye. Have a great okay, night. Okay, thanks. You too. See ya. Bye. <laughs>